Welcome back to The Substitutes. It's been a week since the fallout for England's loss to Italy and a lot of blame has gone around. And we're now going to be looking at Gareth Southgate. Now, the guy has led England to a World Cup semi-final and a Euros final. So you think on paper that he'd be a good manager. But we want to take a look at his record. And Majid, we're going to start with you. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. Better than Gareth Southgate. <laughs> Talk to me about his record against the big sides. So this is this is the part that I don't think England fans are recognizing enough. Number one, I want to say I would not take the runners-up medal off. It is an accomplishment. You should be very proud of what you've done. You've done something that your countrymen have not done over 55 years. Having said that, from a very objective, analytic perspective, you have to look at the luck of the draw. You've had two very lucky draws. The and this is luck that you banked in from before. You've had, England has had shitty draws in my lifetime. Uh, 98, going against Argentina. They're very early. They have to sometimes play good, the good teams. This run, these two runs for the last tournaments, World Cup and Euro, they didn't have that. They actually... The external factor was not there. They didn't have to deal with quality opposition in a traditional sense. And in that way, and I want to add here, in both those matches that they el got eliminated, they were up 1-0. So, now what I want to go on with this is, with Garrett Southgate, the main issue, in my opinion, tournament or final, this was in both of them, his team still does not have a clear identity. Mancini, for example, with this Italian squad, they have their defensive tradition, but he knew identity-wise, his team is going to be beautiful moving forward. It's going to be fluid moving forward. Gareth Southgate has not decided yet if he's fielding a defensive team or an attacking team. It's in the middle. It's a very contextual kind of thing, and there's okay. no identity. So he's trying to look for a little bit of balance, and... <sighs> In many ways, if you even look at the big sides in the last 12 years, even Spain, for example, their identity wasn't just uh, we're going to be Barcelona, we're going to be passing it around. No, they played cautiously on the big stage. And this is the thing that he tried to adapt. But against the big sides, did you notice that he really, he just, it was just blah. Like his record wasn't that great if you go back. Fine, forget this tournament. His record against the big sides... If you would call it that, Croatia, Germany, he did well. But go back a bit further. His record is abysmal. And he always sets up negatively. Do you think... Do and you that's think... my issue, is if you're going to set up negatively your identity, you should know that your brand of football is playing back. You can play like Greece 2004. You'll absorb pressure, pressure, pressure. And then you'll score one with the talent... With the talent he has at his disposal, he could easily score one, if not four, which is the problem. That he's got attacking players, but he's trying to instill a defensive mentality, but even that defensive mentality is not going through in the tactics. They're not lining up ten in the back. Like, it's a very hodgepodge. For all of the marketing that Garrett Southgate knows what he's doing and this and that, he I didn't might feel know like... it against smaller teams, but when it's quality opposition... I, it's his bad. tactics they're not there I don't he might be a wonderful man manager but from a nuanced tactical perspective I don't think he's, he's a wonderful still... man manager <laughs> look I just I'm just flat out gonna say it like what I don't like what he did with Greenwood and Foden I thought he threw them under the bus a wonderful man manager would have handled that a lot better um, generally speaking when you talk about his tactics against the big sides I mean if you go to 2018 he played five big teams, Italy in a friendly, uh, he played Belgium twice in the World Cup, he played Croatia as well, and he lost all of those games. In the Nations League, he lost to Spain as well. And fine, in some of those games, against the one in Belgium in the uh, third, uh, third place playoff, they had better stats, they had more shots and more possession, but generally when you look at England, their tactics are three at the back, um, and we say three, it's mostly five, really. Like, their wingbacks are usually pegged back. Like, it, there's nothing really special about it. And we can, we're looking back at his previous matches, but let's look at this tournament. What do you think about his tactics against Croatia, against Germany, against 
I'm even putting Denmark in there because they reached the semifinal. So, again, I the thing is fundamentally I have a big disagreement with Garrett Southgate. If you have attacking players, you take you play attacking football. You try and score three four zero, and if you give one, one or two or three goals, you know against you, you have that confidence that I have the quality, right? You know that. Once they get going, if Kane scores one, he's going to score another in two minutes. Garrett Southgate has that very British sense of conservatism when it comes to sports, athletics, where I'd rather not lose than win. Like, this is, I feel, a very yes. cultural difference between America and the British. America goes, get rich or die trying. You know what? If I don't get it, halas, no problem. British are more safe face sort of thing and it shows in their football. It shows in the tournament. It shows with each team they play. They put a lot of pressure against themselves against the small teams that we should win this. They put a lot of inferiority complex against the big teams that we cannot win this. And Garrett Southgate for all of the four years of marketing that he's exercised England's tournament demons. I feel after the final they've all come this generation has been tainted once again well look i don't disagree with you i think that his all the good work that he's done it's generally against smaller teams so i don't really see what the fuss is about when you look at fine he won against croatia he sort of played an attacking formation in the 4-3-3 um and they won 1-0 Against Germany, though, they won 2-0, but they had less shots, less possession. I was really bored watching them play. And it wasn't really against the most amazing Germany side. Um, in Denmark... Yeah, go on. Like, against no, no, Denmark... In Denmark, the penalty... I the pe Okay, the penalty was one thing. Like the, I'm fine, they won on a very dubious penalty, which... By the way, I don't see Denmark starting a position to replay that semi-final, by the way. Um, but, but like, uh, they, he brought on Grealish and then he brought him off. Like, I, I do sometimes get that, but, you know, like, you are clearly, you've got the more better players. You can play on the break, you can score extra goals, and he took this mentality to the final. And in that final, there's so much to unpack, but talk to me about his tactics in the final. What did he do wrong? He, well, this this use of substitutes was a tournament and final wide issue. He doesn't. Un, I don't think he understands the purpose or how to use. Like he's much more knowledgeable in football than I am. Let's be clear here. I don't want to diss him like that. But from the outside looking in, man, make a call and stick by it. You're putting on Grealish. You're taking him off. You're putting on Henderson for defensive cover, and then you're taking him off. Yeah. Which one is it? It, that and was a... Henderson came back for the penalties. The veteran, like you want an ex I, this, the 19 versus age thing, I go with the age. I think you need experience, which is why I look at Cialini took one. He's a center back. He took one because there is something about experience. It's not just the percentage accuracy. Like if it's a striker, he will score a penalty. Penalties become different. But with Jordan Henderson, you like, again, that substitution, it could have played a part in the penalties. I don't know why. A lot of the British public, in my opinion, has given hard pa like is giving passes to Gareth Southgate just for going to the final. But I think they should have won it. They were healthy. They had the home advantage. They had everything going for it. the players themselves. The eleven is quality. They should not be barely winning or just two one pipping Denmark, pipping Ukraine. They should be four one. And I've said this before in the well, tournament. They demolished the Ukraine. Small teams, but... England should be crushing them. Yeah, the, look, they demolished Ukraine, and that's the only side that they actually demolished in the entire that tournament. That was a Ukraine who had played uh, penalties or extra time just before. They were they, tired, too. Yeah, fair, but, like, I know what you mean. Like, for one, Sterling, and I know that he's scored a lot of goals in this tournament, and he's been effective, but the guy, generally, he just runs into a brick ball. It looks like he's the right place, right time. He was been ineffective for a few games before that. That's my personal opinion. He just kept running into players and he just played badly. Well, like this is the like Sterling might not be the best player or he this tournament he was not, but isn't that up to the manager not to play him to see that thing and say, "You know what? I'm starting 
Jordan Henderson, we're going defensive first. We don't want to give up the goal. Like, all I'm saying is that's up to... I can blame the player for not playing well, but if it's a tournament-wide thing, which it was with Sterling, he was bright in certain spots. He was very Walcott uh, in his prime. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. outrun yeah. the other guys, but he doesn't really do anything after that. <laughs> yeah, he would. He may be able to beat some players, but in this case, this guy kept running into players. I don't <laughs> understand why he kept Rashford and Sancho on the bench for so long and he didn't bring them on at the start of extra time like uh, there were so many reports that Rashford looked amazing in training I know that he's carrying an injury and that actually can translate into a real life match but then you even have Jack Grealish like I just Captain I don't know best in Villa like, yeah at least like and the, one of the brightest in players right. in the tournament when brought on like, he, he should have at least got a start. And I know Gareth Southgate is sticking to his principles, but I don't feel that his principles have been good for the side. I think that he's been very, very detrimental. He's had two runs in a World Cup, which was an easy draw, and he lost in the semifinals. And now, against Italy, he should have won. Like, you don't go on the back foot on this after the second minute after scoring. I don't get that. That's the. I don't know why he's gotten a pass from the media. They haven't talked about the fact that he's given up two one zero leads now in elimination games. I think that's very worrying. That you come in, you did everything right in the first five minutes, kind of thing. You scored the goal that you needed to, and then it just devolves into like nothingness. It's not even stupidity. It's sort it was of so dull. indifference almost. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was very, very dull to see. Like, it was just a bland side playing against men, basically. Like, they were playing against people who were so experienced. They knew what they were doing that if if Saka was breaking, they'd pull him down. And there they are complaining about the petition to restart the match. Like, I just don't... Like it I do want to add here, mm. for the Garrett Southgate, what you were talking about with Rashford and Sancho, for, again, from the outside looking in as a colored person, as a colored dude looking at the situation, uh, I don't want to, there's no racist. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we do, there is race playing a part in this. That's been, that, that's become clear. Um, Garrett Southgate did everything in his hands possible to put his employees in a position to fail, not to succeed. A manager's job is to put his team in the best places to succeed. This guy, Garrett Southgate, did the worst possible job for all three of his colored uh, workers. Rashford and Sancho should not be coming on. He should have canceled that substitution. If you're ready to cancel Jordan Henderson after yeah. you put him on the field and you're ready to drag him back, at 118, because the Italians, the commentator talked about this. Is Rashford going to get on? There's no time. It's 116th minute. And the Italians I were re still messing around with the ball. It got up to 118 before possession was lost and the substitutions came on by around 119. At that point, Gareth Southgate should have just said, you know what? I don't want these. Whoever is there, I want them. I don't. Weird, weird. It's like there was, like the, there I was say, no Gareth Southgate knows more football than I do, but this is one of those one oh one mistakes that who sends a guy just for penalties when he's not a penalty specialist? Do you know what I'm like? Rashford's well, not a penalty. Rashford guy. is not a penalty specialist. He's taken penalty under pressure, but Sancho isn't, and Saka definitely isn't. And I don't like those are the two glaring ones. Rashford, I could possibly understand, by the way. Like, I will actually say I understand Rashford. I've seen him take big penalties, like the one against PSG. Not when, that he took not when your legs are cold and your butt no, that, is squeaky. That I agree with as well. Like, you know, like you don't just. Uh, he should have brought him on earlier. That's what I would have said. Like, he should have brought him on maybe at the start of extra time. Nothing's happening. We're not really getting at Italy. Let's make something happen. But he's too conservative. And the next question I want to ask is, do you think he's the right person to lead England to the World Cup next year? No, I don't think so. I'm not overawed by him. The more marketing terms I hear about, oh my God, did you see Gareth Southgate analytics and this and that? And uh, we went to therapy and we did this. 
I don't think so. The, you're not winning against the big teams. It's not that you're not. You can lose against the big teams. Again, I said at the beginning, wear that runner's up medal with pride because it's still, no one will ever take that away. I don't care that you played the best in the world and you got second in the world. That's not, or in Europe. That's not something to hang your head for. But Garrett Southgate leading these men to win a tournament? I don't think so. And it's only mainly because he has not figured out his identity because he doesn't know his identity these other issues the substitutions and stuff come into play Yanni if he's a defensive guy he knows he's gonna bring on Jordan Henderson to milk the lead and whatever if he's an attacking guy he knows he's gonna bring on Rashford at extra time so that he has half an hour to score a goal this guy doesn't know what he's doing he's in the middle he's literally did both he brought on Henderson and then he brought on the attackers which one are you trying to do first and because yeah. of that, and I've seen this over two tournaments, he's lost a 1-0 lead in two tournaments. Because of that, I would say, no, he's not the right guy. He's a brilliant guy to have in the locker room. As an assistant coach, as a consultant, he's brilliant. And I have nothing against the guy personally. I feel for him, for his story, missing the penalty. He's still an excellent manager. He's a cool guy. He, I, don't, I like the blandness, personally. But no, he's not the right guy for English football. I would actually even throw a random name out there, a truly random name, Zinedine Zidane. Uh, no, that would tarnish his reputation. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, just no. I'm not even gonna throw a name out. Anybody who takes that job, it's, it's poison for them. Um, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. For me, no, Wait, I'm not, I'm not, is, I'm not is, touching is... this man. No way, I'm not touching. But... Is Southgate the man? Is Southgate the no, man for the I, job? No, I, I, I have made my point clear. I don't want him anywhere near this England side. I think he's crap. But I'm not even putting a recommendation forward because this job is toxic. No, thank <laughs> you. Uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think Southgate is the right man to uh, lead England to the World Cup? Uh, thank you all for joining and uh, like and subscribe. See you next time.